Hello, podcast listener. Welcome to JJ Meets World After Dark. Tucker and I are going to talk about classy things like jazz music and getting a bucket of chicken for dinner. That's classy. So sit back, relax, and enjoy this episode of JJ Meets World After Dark. And by the way, if you'd like to help support our podcast, visit jjmeetsworld.com where you can donate to our Patreon, pick up some killer swag at our merch shop, or click the link to Apple Podcast and give us a five-star review. One, two, three, four. J.J. Gordon, sort of like that Indiana Jones in that he's always sniffing out his next adventure. Yes, he is! He's always interviewing guests so he can have them on his show and they can talk about pop culture, arts, and leisure. J.J. has his flag unfurled and he likes his french fries curled and he's fun and then he twirls as he goes to meet the world. He will march into the rain even if his ankle sprain. Take a peek inside his brain. This podcast is called J.J. Meets World. I really try to hit the R in February. February? Yeah, February. Yeah. Because you want to sound, sound classy, right? You want to yeah. sound classy. Yeah. I'm calling uh, th- this discussion JJ Meets World After Dark. And so, Tucker, if you could please put some some light jazz on behind us. So okay. it seems classy. I've got a, a mixed drink in front of me right here. And there's a, a box of cigars. Uh, that I, I purchased, but I don't smoke, so I'm just going to look at them. And we want to talk about things that are classy today on JJ Meets World and how to class up your own life a little bit. And I think we got to start with this by acknowledging the things in our lives that are classy. Tucker, when you were a young man, were there ever times where you're like, wow, I went to a friend's house and like they had HBO or something like that. Oh, and you yeah. Thought, oh, this is classy. These, you know, not necessarily wealthy, but like this is a cut above. Like these people know what's going on. Oh, yeah. Mike Grayton had DSL Ooh. before any of us did. And I was like, oh, my God, your parents can talk on the phone and you can be on the Internet at the same time. And it's really fast. Classy. Yeah. You mean you don't have to go through like, what do you have to do to connect? Well, it's just always on. What do you mean? It's always on. Like you don't dial up first. And wait until you see how fast this Napster downloads. (laughs) How soon? How at what point were you a family that was quick or slow to adopt having the Internet at home? We I mean, we weren't fast. I think uh, we had a we had a gateway computer that connected to the internet that was in like our family had like an office room downstairs that really was just home to whatever crap we put in at the time. Mm -hmm. And I think we had a dial up internet source from red river online was the name of the company that provided it locally. And once my parents realized that when we go online, you can't be on the phone. We got a separate phone line downstairs. Mm. And I don't remember what the phone number was, but if you spell out Ada Jazzle, <laughs> that is that is what the phone number is. Ada Jazzle. Um, and I don't know why I remember that, but I certainly do. So... Uh, for me, I remember as a kid. How do you spell that, JJ? That's the episode title. A J A Z L. Add a jazzle. So whatever number that, <laughs> whatever that makes. Um, and I feel like for a while, like jazzle was what I chose as a password for stuff all the time. Um, and then we eventually, like, we got a DSL line when oh, I was a senior fuck. in high school. And it came with like a new modem that you had to put inside of the computer itself. And I didn't know how to do that at that point. And so we had it for like three months. And my friend uh, J Scott came over. He goes, you've got a DSL. We've got to get this hooked up. And he opened the computer. And I was amazed at watching someone open a computer at that time. Wow. So here was something that was really classy when I was a kid. And I was like, wow, these people are super smart. They're ultra cultured. They had a dual VCR so they could go rent a tape and then Ooh, yeah. make a dub of that tape. Then they had a special sticker they could put on the side. The mom had really neat handwriting, but then they also once a month, she would update 
a like word perfect document that had nice. all of the movies listed on there. So you could oh, always nice. know what was in their home collection. And while they never had the things like the case art that you enjoy so much, you could go there and it was like going to a movie store. And I was like, this oh, yeah. is really, really classy. I'm I'm digging it, though, man. That would be cool. I would love to have that now. I actually have the exact deck you're talking about. I just picked one up like two months ago from a thrift shop in town for five bucks where I, I actually had never seen one before. And I thought I would. I mean, I, I'm not using it to dupe tapes. I just think it's cool, you know, yeah. but I would have that would have. I remember because I was really big into into like video really early on so i'd play with our vcr all the time and i'd like try to make dubs of things or whatever but i was always doing vcr to vcr right like you you would have to go through an elaborate like you'd actually have to own two vcrs and usually we didn't right it was the type of thing where i was like this is friggin amazing because you i mean you just you had so much power in your hand to make whatever you wanted uh be yours at that time now that being said i now understand the fbi warning <laughs> and like this is exactly what they're talking about <laughs> yeah. right yeah right like i remember seeing it be like what's the big deal who's doing that <laughs> well um these friends of jj's my grandmother thought that the fanciest dinner that you could get was the olive garden because they had real cloth napkins italian mm. food had like a feeling of being you know like higher than you know, do you know what i'm talking about like there was a there's a mm-hmm. feeling that ooh, this is good um and then they had house wine in a big jug that they would bring from table to table and she was like yes this is very high class this is very chic um this is another thing i thought of so my mom when she would have somebody over for coffee like let's say someone from down the block or she had like a friend who came over, she would put out a coffee cup, but then she'd also have a saucer, which was just one of our small plates that would go underneath the coffee cups. And I used to think that is so classy putting that out. Mm, Yeah. Did you guys have anything that only came out on certain occasions in your household, like a dish or we only, we only use the Turkey fryer at some point. I mean, the manger at Christmas, but that was about it. Ooh, like, but even still, right? I mean, really Christmas stuff. Really, just hot. I'm trying to think. I don't think. No, I mean, not really. Like, neither of my parents, um, our household just wasn't. It, it, let me put it this way. It's not that we were never hospitable. We always were. Like, if guests came over, like, my mom, oh, let me throw a bunch of stuff together, right? But we didn't have, like, oh, this is the nice thing for this occasion. Oh, this is the this for that. We just didn't have many objects that were like that. Anything that was of sort of heirloom importance of any kind even would be away in a box or something like that. We were very much a Tupperware family, very much uh, that kind of thing. Like, hey, let's just cut a bunch of stuff and throw it on a thing and that'll work great. Do you ever use uh, frilly toothpicks like the toothpicks with the little cellophane at the top? You know what? I think we did for you know what? Here's the thing. My mom would always throw really fun um, like Christmas mixers with her friends, like like over to the house, especially when we lived in South Fargo, and um, and so like at those times, yeah, we you'd see a lot of like the different hors d'oeuvres and stuff. But for the most most part, no. Um, what about uh, what about this? Do you remember the first time you rode in a limousine? Uh yes, I was in the sixth grade. Uh, it was graduation. My mom did this for me, surprised me for this on my last day of sixth grade. So. For some people, their experience of uh, like elementary school is that it ends after fifth grade because then you go to, you know, middle school. But when I went through school, elementary, the last year of elementary school was sixth grade. And then seventh grade would be junior high school, seven through nine, high school, 10 through 12. So this I had gone to Horace Mann Elementary um, since 19. 89 right and so like this was a big deal like i loved that school and i was i was moving you know we were all moving on or whatever to the next phase of our young lives and so my mom to treat me on the day the last day of school she had hired a limousine and the limo went and picked up a bunch of my friends first and then picked me up 
So I'm like getting up and getting ready for school. And mom goes, your ride's here. And I'm like, my ride? Because Horace Mann was only two blocks away from where I lived. And so I just walked to school every day. And then she showed me its limo. And then the limo just kind of like drove us around town for like 45 minutes um, Uh, before going to school. When I was in sixth grade, I remember I had like four friends who had birthday parties that were limo parties. Nice. And there wasn't anything special to them other than riding around in a limo and us making other people roll down their windows and asking them if they had any gray Poupon. <laughs> you know what? I think we may have done that. Yeah, <laughs> I yeah. think we did that. That must have been an entire era of fucking limo drivers lives. Like, God damn it. When are people going to stop making that joke? I also think that there is something, you know, like, when I was younger, people had like specialty wrapping paper that was really, really nice. And we used to wrap using like the Sunday funnies or, you know, <laughs> you like it's possible that if you invite me to your birthday on April 1st, you're getting Christmas wrapping paper on your gift. Oh, yeah. for sure. And so when I when I would receive a gift or I'd see someone presenting a gift that was. Oh, this is fancy. Look at that. If they've got wrapping paper that matches, you know, like might be Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles wrapping paper. And then the gift would be a turtles action figure that yeah. I thought was like when I grow up, that's the kind of person that I want to be. I want to figure <laughs> that out. I uh, I am so terrible at wrapping presents, meaning unskilled every time. I wrap a present. I feel so stupid. I'm like, how am I this bad at this? I've watched tutorials. I've practiced, right? I've done everything. So I typically go, I might just go to a gift bag (laughs) because my wrapping looks so bad and it makes it look like I just threw this together for you when it's like, no, I actually tried really hard, but I'm so bad at it. What's that? I said, I made an attempt. Yeah, I really tried really hard. I really did. <laughs> I know it doesn't look like it. Uh, when people would have a candy dish, I thought that was really classy, too. Right. Mm. So uh, and like See, they would have the those thing. fancy candies. Honestly, I don't think that I as a kid was ever like, oh, you know what? That's classy. But you were like making the classy judgment. That's interesting. I was. And, it, and I would say this. Uh, judgment's a, a hard word, I think, to use. I, don't, I, don't, I'm guess, I'm not, I don't mean it in the harsh sense. Right, yeah. Right? Because, but it was things that I thought, like, th- you know, this is a life goal for me at this point. Like, I need to live my life to get to this point if I want to consider myself mm. successful in any way, shape, or form. For example, <laughs> the first time I went to prom, I knew the tuxedo I was going to get was going to have tails. Do you know what I'm talking about? A tux with tails? Yep. Because I that was like, was mine. <laughs> this is the, epi- you know, this is what Fred Astaire wore. And he, uh-huh. he danced and looked so great. It did not live up to the expectations <laughs> that I was looking for. JJ, I think I had tails my junior prom as well. <laughs> I think I did. <laughs> Look at us. We are cringe. so classy, Tucker. Oh God, we were cringy teenagers. Oh my God. And you know, it's I think as a kid, we there's a lot of stuff that we don't realize is not as impressive or oh, yeah. cool. And certainly like as the older I get, I realize like it's not about things. It's not about, you know, like just going and having an experience. It's about what you do with it. It's about the knowledge you gain. It's about the happy that you're able to bank and it's it's hard for me to think back as a kid because i recently found a a christmas wish list from when i was maybe like eight nice which is a great step down uh you know like a nostalgia but i'm clearly missing some some great moments uh like like for example the thing i wanted at the top of it was a talk back. Do you know what a talk back is? Are you talking about um like the uh the thing that uh was in Home Alone 2? Correct. That was I would dude, I was just thinking about that right before you started talking about it. <laughs> See? Okay. So I it ties into another thought I had which was that my uh, my mark as, of success as a kid was like when I have a house that has its own McDonald's in it. 
that is when I am successful because I saw it in Richie Rich also starring Macaulay Culkin. Oh, yeah, there you go. And Professor Keenbean wants to know what's in the special sauce. Uh, <laughs> I also thought like the peep, if you had a job in a building that had an elevator in it, you are an executive. Mm-hmm. And I remember a good friend of the family, Wes Hansen, took me to work with him when he worked for like a, a company that provides insurance to car lots. So in case they get robbed or someone like goes for a test drive and doesn't bring the car back. And he worked in a building in Minneapolis that wasn't in downtown. It was kind of off of America, uh, America Boulevard, which is in Bloomington. But the building itself was three, like three separate buildings combined to one. And they were kind of like, Mm. like tiered. So that looked cool. But inside of the place he worked, there was a coffee shop. So you could get a candy Mm, bar whenever you wanted. You just had to ride the elevator down to the lobby and get yourself a candy bar. (laughs) And I thought that was the coolest thing ever. (laughs) And like, that is just like amazing to me about uh, that. People can, (sighs) people can just have a candy bar whenever they want. Like, that was like the epitome when I was a kid. Uh, I get thinking like I'll have a candy bar anytime I want and no one's going to stop me. I'm going to have them so often. I don't really have them that often at all. Oh, I have a lot of ice cream, though. You know what? Like, I definitely do not eat uh, candy bars as often as I thought I was going to when I, you know, when I thought I'll make I'll do whatever. I'm. How about this? At the time of this recording, it is nine o'clock on a Saturday and I am ready to go to bed. I know, dude, and I'm going to go like glue down floor tiles. <laughs> I know that's a that's a that's a tough situation. Um, but you know what? The nice thing then is I'm going to go to bed and I'm just going to sleep in. Oh, good for you. It's going to be awesome. Tomorrow, I'm going to go eat at Molly Ye's restaurant in East Grand Forks. It's called Bernie's Molly Ye, who is the host of Girl Meets Farm, a show on the Food Network. Uh, she lives outside of the Grand Forks area, and so she's opening her own restaurant there, which I think is neat that she chose that, you know, East Grand Forks to open up a restaurant rather than yeah. be like, oh, I'm going to open it in New York City. And I don't think that it's going to blow my my socks off. I just don't. Why? Yeah, I, I think that when I see it, I'm like, I understand the need or the, I understand the need people have to try this place because she's a major celebrity and they are, you know, they are probably big fans and they can't wait to try some of the stuff that she talks about on her show. But when I look at the menu for it, I think to myself, I'm probably going to have to stop at McDonald's on the way home. <laughs> I am. Uh, you don't think there's anything for you? Yeah, no, I just I'm not seeing anything. And I'm sure that what I have, what I'm going to have is delicious, but it's not going to be enough to fulfill my man size appetite. Okay. Uh, So I'm planning a trip to New York city. And let me tell you the problem I'm having right now. I haven't been to New York enough to really intimately know the food scene there. And I want to go and I want to have an amazing steak dinner. Mm. Right. Yeah. So, I've started doing some online research and I've realized you really can't trust the internet when it comes to the quality of a steak. No, because I I think that there are places that buy reviews. I think that, you know, they're only going to take a picture of the most attractive thing they can find. There's just this element that unless someone tells me it's so good, you got to go. I can't trust it. I just can't trust it, Tucker. Um, so then what, well then, then what are you going to do to base your decision off of? So I think when you're I ask around while you're there, you're going to talk to a concierge. Okay. So that's the other thing too. I also don't believe them because one time I asked the concierge, I'm like, Hey, can I get a recommendation for a local, you know, great local place to eat? They're like, well, would you consider the Outback local? And I was like, no, <laughs> no, I do not. That was a, Okay, that was a bad concierge, right? If you had a bad plumber, would you never call a plumber again? No, but I will tell you this much. I would think, should I hire an electrician to come take care of this plumbing problem? I think, well, no, I think, I think, 
I think you lose nothing by asking the concierge their opinion. If they give you that opinion, then you can just not take it. Don't you worry that maybe the concierge has some kind like has some kind of deal with the steakhouse down the street and they're like, oh hey, you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. Only if they give you like if they tell you, hey, tell them, you know, Matt sent you. I'm like, I'm not fucking mentioning your name, <laughs> you know, like like that's probably, you know, it's like the promo code, right? How are they going to get the promo code through? One of the interesting things is, and I'm sure you, you know, you spent you've spent way more time in Las Vegas than I have. But every time I would get into a cab in Las Vegas, they're like, hey, you uh, you want to go to a gentleman's club? Uh, I got some uh, I got some free admittance here for you. And you just hand it in. And I realized that, like, these guys want you to go because they get some kind of a kickback if you go. Mm, and mm-hmm. I was like, I mean, like, hey, man, I we all have to make a living, right? I totally understand yeah. that. But stop trying to shove that stuff down my throat just because it, it's better for you. And that's why I think getting a true, legit recommendation for something is rare. Again, super classy, right? Like if you can have someone who gives you a great recommendation and there's they, they don't gain anything from it other than the fact that they know you're going to have a good night, that's classy. classy. I guess then what you could do, because I mean, I think you've got a, you've raised a really good point. I think the only people you can trust are locals who are not yeah, that they were that they wouldn't be someone you would expect of working an angle, right? So if you're, you know, you're hanging out with some people at like the poker table in Vegas, and uh, you know you're going to be in New York not gambling, but let's say you're at a show, and you strike up a conversation with a couple of people who are from the area, be like, hey, where would be a place to get up a good steak? Do you know, and like hear from the locals what they would say, because that way there's highly unlikely that that's someone who is getting a kickback from the steakhouse. I always ask, have you, have you thought about like YouTube reviews, like going on YouTube and seeing if people have said and like show that, cause at, at the very least with YouTube, you can watch a steak get made and be like, okay, I'm actually getting a better sense of what I might be buying. So one of the things I have a problem with <laughs> is the fact that if a YouTuber goes to a restaurant and then reviews it and like they take pictures of everything they ate, I'm like, I don't think I like this person to begin with. <laughs> so why would I trust their opinion when it comes to how much they liked or disliked this place? You know, okay, they, well then they're curating their whole it? experience here. It sure sounds like, like, who do you trust then? Oh, I'll tell you. I'll tell you who I trust when it comes. I'm down trying to, to figure out who's left. Shoe shiners. <laughs> <laughs> and let me tell you, yeah, you're right. They wouldn't. They're not in a service industry that would benefit from kickbacks by sending so service. Let, to let me let me tell you why. Okay. <laughs> Years ago, I was getting ready to go to. Uh, they work in airports, basically. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, sometimes you'll find them like in mall, like not malls, but like like shopping centers and stuff like that. So I can't tell you the last time I owned a pair of shoes that could be shiny. Okay. First of all, you, sir, are thinking that all they do is work with like leather shoes. They can spiff up your sneakers. Really? Yeah. And so this is, this is the reason why I know this. Jared Nillis and I are getting ready to go to, uh, to Europe. We're going to go and meet up with some friends who are in Paris. And then we're going to uh, take a train up to Amsterdam and fly home. And we're so excited. It's going to be great. We're gonna have a wonderful time. And we're in Chicago. We're at O'Hare International Airport. And we're about to get on this gigantic plane. I mean, the biggest plane that I've ever been on, not just because it has uh, a lot of passengers, but like It clearly is made to fly over oceans. So I'm ready to get on this plane and they're boarding people by section. And our section is 16. So there are 15 other sections that are going to be boarded before we get on. And we get in this giant line. It's got to be at least 200 people long. And, you know, they're having to check everyone's ticket before they get on. And the guy at the shoe shine desk who's by us says, hey, what guys want to get shoe shine? And we said, oh, no, no, we're wait- we got to wait in line to get on the plane. He goes, what's the point waiting in line? Plane's not going to take off without you. He goes, you got seats. 
they're not going to give away your seats. Why not get your shoe shines? <laughs> and I was like, and he's like, see all these people? They're all standing in line. They're all going to be grumpy and mad because they've been standing in line. They're taking one step at a time. And I was like, this guy's making a lot of sense right now. Yeah, he's making. He's a good salesperson. And so we sat down and we each got a shoe shine. We each paid five dollars for a shoe shine, and my sneakers looked great. Like, I mean, he like he made them look like practically brand new and Jared was wearing flip flops. And so he took the flip flops <laughs> off and he, he even, you know, like he sprayed some stuff on the inside and he goes, OK, here like this. And then he put like a wax on them and Jared like put them on. He goes, it's like I'm wearing brand new shoes. He goes, huh. these are great. These are amazing. So to me and then, you know what? The line, like what we're sitting chatting with this guy, having a great time. The line dwindles down to about 10 people. We go, we get on the flight and you know what? Yeah, we walked right to our seats. We didn't have to wait in the line while we were in there, while someone else is putting mm. bags up. We didn't have to help old women get into their seats. We just like, boom, headed right to them. And it was great. It was fantastic. And so I will always remember the advice I got from that shoe shine. Like, don't wait in line with those chumps. Yeah. What do you think he does for Crocs? Oh, I bet Crocs are the things that clean up the nicest, because when you think about it, people are like, I can wear Crocs to everything and every, you know, I don't have to do anything right. to them. Right. So they're constantly right. sweating. There's a bunch of stuff that I think they could do to really make Crocs look and feel better. What's the what's the shoe that you've held on to the longest in your life? Ooh, held on to the longest. Yeah. Also, by the way. Talk about classy. Anything alligator skin, classy alligator skin mm. wallet. If you've got shoes that are alligator skin, uh, I swear to God, one time I met a person who had like a tie that had all like a strip of alligator leather on it. I was like, that is classy as can be. Yeah, I, I, uh, I disagree. I think alligator skin looks gross. Oh God, black alligator skin, so nice, so no cool, way, man. No way. I agree though with like the whole philosophy about like getting in line because I've been on so many airplanes, and that's the thing is you can tell in an airplane or in an airport that most people who are there, th this is something they maybe do once a year, maybe twice, right? And so it's it's it, at the most maybe every couple of years, right? And so. They're not used to the hustle and bustle. They didn't really kind of plan through all the steps of what they were going to be doing. They don't know where their where their you know pass is or anything else like that. And they'll do rookie mistakes like yeah, standing in line to get on the airplane. Like listen, they're going to call the group you're in at some point, and then that group will get up and they'll get in right. But regardless, the plane's not going anywhere. You you getting up and getting in, sitting down doesn't make anything happen much faster. Do you think that air travel no longer is classy? Because there is a time when air travel itself was the epitome of class. Like when you had a friend who said, oh, we're going to, you know, Chicago and we're, we're going to take a plane. I was like, oh, your family knows how to travel. Classy. I've, are we talking classy as luxury? I think we're talking or, or about is it like the is it like a, is it like a sign of high taste? Um, you know, to to be honest, I think it's in the eye of the beholder. Like the thing that would be classy to me is you've got to pack your suitcase that is going to get checked and go onto a plane, and then there you're going to get a ticket. You're going to get a piece of paper that is specially printed just for you so that you can get your seat on this plane to go somewhere. Because when I was a kid, when we would go to someplace like Chicago, I would pack like my clothes and my mom would put them in a hamper and put it in the back of our minivan where we would drive. <laughs> and by the time we got to Chicago, all of us, all of us hated each other just a little bit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it also smelled like farts and milk duds in the car. I can't I don't think I've ever been on a flight that was a classy flight. Um, but I know it's possible, but I've been on flights where I was like, hey, this felt luxurious because and there were usually flights like that last leg of a flight journey back home to Fargo. 
because oftentimes there's a chance the plane's only going to be half full. Sure. And when that happens, then you've got like leg room and then it's like, okay, now this doesn't feel so bad, right? Because air travel is so uncomfortable in like every single step of the way possible. It's crazy to me how it can't be more comfortable in some way. Right, but like, like I know we have the technology for but it. But I think it used to be, right? It probably used to be. Like you see the the heightened feeling of like the 1950s, like when people dressed up to get on a plane and right. the, the flight attendants, you know, were like that was such a coveted job. Um I think like to some extent, like there was a cl- it used to be much classier. It's it's interesting to watch the scenes from Mad Men when they're on airplanes because right. they're all smoking. <laughs> and like how you see to me, one of my favorite scenes in Mad Men is where uh, Don Draper and um, uh, Roger Sterling are heading to California to talk with the sun kissed. Uh, like the sun kissed orange juice people. And Roger says something to the tune of like, Oh, you know, all we want to do is or like, all we have to do is go out there, show them like what we've got. And they'll go, golly. And then we take a check and we come home. And I remember thinking to myself while watching that scene, I'm like, yeah, that is exactly what people from one coast think of another coast, you know? Yeah. Californians are like, yeah, I'm going to go to New York where it's dirty and gross and cramped and you don't ever get the sunlight. (laughs) Um, That Roger Sterling was the best character on that show, by the way. Without a doubt. Not even. Not No one came close. And I think uh, uh, Slattery, is it John Slattery? Yep. No. Yep. Is is it John? He wears Roger Sterling like a second skin. It He is completely inhabiting that character. I will watch scenes of him on YouTube just when I when I'm like in the mood to see some pitch perfect acting like some like absolutely flawless performance. I look up him doing Roger Sterling, who is incredibly classy. Uh, I will also say this people who got to go see more than one movie like a month that was classy to me because they're going to have like an a cinema experience. Mm. Um, mm-hmm. Something I never thought was classy and I just don't get because it's not up to me. Coffee. I know that that's some, oh. to some people like if you made coffee from that little tin with like the plastic lid, you know, like it was small and it was gourmet coffee, but nope, it just didn't, didn't float my boat back in the day. That's just not who I was. I wasn't that type of a classy person. Um, I, I am fascinated by what the boundaries of classy are for you, because it's funny when you say if you say something is not classy, it does make it sound like you're saying it's low, right? It's bad sure. versus just saying, no, it's just not. classy. I mean, I right? guess I could say, like, it's common. It feels common, sure. right? Sure. So like <laughs> eating, <laughs> eating that like goulash type dinner that was so popular when we were kids where it's like elbow macaroni ground beef big chunks of tomato Uh virtually tasteless that was common that was not classy here's what i thought was classy as a kid was anyone who had cable tv oh sure yeah because they had all these options of things yeah we we almost never had cable i think we had cable for one summer at my dad's house at one point and that was it like we never had it and so anytime i'd be at a friend's house pretty much they all had cable and so I'd be like, oh, my God, we could watch like Nickelodeon. And oh, my God, it was amazing. Do you have a feeling that at one point in your life, you will wear a tuxedo again for any particular oh, yeah. event? I hope so. Like if I ever get hitched, I'd probably wear a tux for that. Or if I was I didn't. in someone's wedding party. I wear a tuxedo no. at my wedding. No. No, I, I, I'm not saying you'd have to. I'm just, that's probably the way I would do it. What about, uh, what about swords or weaponry? You think those are classy? Because I do not. No, I mean, I wa- I wish they were, right? I think that'd be kind of cool if they were, but no, they're so not. Especially if you want to walk around with a sword. I mean, <laughs> it's think, like, so th- th- this is why everyone has a different opinion when it comes to what's classy, right? Because I had a roommate who spent a ton of money 
and took hours to choose a sword that was a curved blade that looked like a dragon's tail and the hilt was the dragon's body like l- becoming like the mouth at the you know like the snout at the end and he thought this thing was classity and that when people saw it they'd assume oh this person has such great taste look how he's decorating with this fine you know piece of extremely uh you know like high-end art and the only time someone commented on it when they came to our apartment was when the cops came to arrest my other roommate (laughs) for a warrant and (laughs) They they were like, that's a weapon. And I was like, guys, it is glued onto a wooden stand. You do not need to worry about someone grabbing that sword off the top of our kitchen cabinets. But he thought it was he thought it was classy. What was like the absolute worst fashion choice you were making as a kid growing up? Worst fashion. Well, I didn't wear. I didn't wear jeans or or khakis or anything like that. I wore exclusively sweatpants until I was a freshman or a, a freshman in high school. It was that because of comfort? Nope. It was because I didn't I didn't know. Like, I mean, I once I became I guess like when I was a little kid, I wore shorts and I probably wore like little kid jeans and stuff like that. But once I was able to choose the clothes I wore every day, um, it was bec- it was all body image. Right. It's like mm, I didn't right. want to like try and get into jeans and like they didn't I didn't think that they fit good or, or fit well or looked good. And so for a long time, I didn't. And then there was a small time in high school where because I was making out with my high school girlfriend so much, I had a lot of hickeys. <laughs> and so I wore <laughs> scarves like in the spring. All like in the, like all day during school, like I would, I was constantly wearing a scarf, like I thought I was some kind of like Walt Whitman level poet, and mm. I wish I could. And I see a lot of photos of me from that era, and I'm like, oh, I wish I could go back and change what's going on. <laughs> that's just that's the worst. So when I first got glasses, I was so self conscious about the fact that I was going to be wearing glasses, and I thought. I, I was already very meek as a kid and didn't have a ton of friends, was very shy and was always nervous and filled with anxiety that the kids were going to make fun of me for some reason or another. And I was like, oh, no, glasses. I'm going to need glasses. Oh, this is terrible. Right. They're going to call me four eyes and all this stuff. They never, ever did. But I, I thought they were going to. And so when my mom let me pick out my first pair of glasses, I found a pair that were uh, made of just, they were just clear plastic. They were just completely translucent. Yeah. And I thought, this is perfect. Like, it'll barely look like I'm wearing glasses. It'll, you'll just look, it'll see right through it. Right. That's what, that was my, that was my uh, reasoning was that that's the best idea because if you can see the glasses, then you can make fun of me for them. But if they're, if they're invisible, then you can't see them. Ooh, how about this? Classy contact lenses that change the color of your eyes i don't know i feel like you're lying what no that's classy (laughs) is that that is super like like, as a kid i remember thinking like first of all my friends who had contact lenses i was like oh my gosh you get to you put those in your eyes every day oh and it feels like you were getting rid of the crutch of wearing glasses Mm -hmm. but then now, I'm not talking about someone who had like ones that look like cat eyes. That is that is the opposite of classy. That is and not even common. I am actually judging you for that one. If you had stuff that made it look like you had cat eyes or you were like, you know, like all black or something like that, you needn't have bothered. I'm glad that you can express yourself, but that is not something that I would ever choose for myself or for any other person. But um I had a friend who had no pigment in one of her eyes and she got contact lenses so that both of her eyes were blue and it matched. Oh, interesting. And I thought that was so cool that she could make that choice and like want that. And she goes, it's great because I would watch people stare in one eye. And so to me, that's classy, right? You made a classy choice to control your own, uh, you know, to control the way people view you from the outside. I thought that was classy. 
when you say pigment, do you just mean like, um, like it was all white with a dot yeah. or that it yeah, really and, and like, and not white, white, but like it was, it was dull and cloudy all around it. Oh, okay. Got it. So it would look like she could see fine, but it would make it look like she was blind or something. Right. To them. Got yeah. it. Okay. And so I, and she was, she was excited about, it. and you know, she went a long time without it. And I think now she does not wear anything and she's like, well, screw it. If you don't like it, you know, sure. you don't have to look. But at the time that was something that mattered to, to her. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I went, I went through a whole period of uh, Bruce Lee t-shirts for a couple of years. Like every day was a different Bruce Lee t-shirt. Do you remember your <laughs> favorite was, yeah. Bruce Lee shirt? I had like 10 Bruce Lee shirts and I would just cycle through those. I mean, did you have a favorite of those Bruce Lee shirts though? I, I think I did, but I couldn't tell you what it is right now off the top of my head. I just remember one year asking, I want a bunch of Bruce Lee shirts and I got them and I just wore them all the time. Okay. Uh, classy listening to music without lyrics in it. Oh, like like uh, orchestral classical music. It, it doesn't even have to be like nowadays, like looking back, it didn't have to be even like orchestral. But like I knew people who had, you know, um, like uh, like just like piano covers of famous songs and stuff mm. like that. But it you, didn't have the you lyrics. Think like, you think it's something like Ada Jazzel? It just like Ada Jazzel. <laughs> I think people like to listen to Ada Jazzel music because it's a little tweet up. Tweet it up, up, up. <laughs> yeah, bop, boop, ba, doop, boop, boop, boop. See, here's the like that kind of that music. Like I would, there's so few music that I'd be like, yeah, I'm gonna definitely put that one on. Like I like would would you just listen to some? Like I want to listen to someone doing that. You know what? No, but I will tell you. In fact, you want to know what I think is super classy. For a long time, when I needed to concentrate, I wanted to listen to something, but it had to be something that had some kind of a recognizable beat. My problem with jazz is you really can't tell when a song ends or be and a new one begins mm. sometimes. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I listened to the Vince Guardi trio, who is the one who did all the music for the, the peanuts, the Charlie Brown specials back in the day. Yeah. And they released some amazing like compilation albums that like have this, the, the music that plays while they're skating on the pond in the, um, in the Christmas special. And when they're waiting for the great pumpkin in the Halloween special and that I listening to that, I remember being somewhere and someone like tapping me on the shoulder and being like, I just, I, you know, I, I heard this amazing music and I just, I had to know what are you listening to? And I was like, huh. Oh, I'm listening to the Vince Guardi trio. And I was like, that's right, because I am classy. <laughs> I am class city mayor. What is sole proprietor and uh, the only homeowner in class city? What is something that a lot of people think is classy that you do not think is classy? In fact, you think it's tacky. scented candles. Mm. I think that if I walk into some place and it smells like Bal you know, balsamer furs or fresh linen that is not really fresh linen. And I'm like, okay, so what are you covering up? Were you just farting a bunch before I came over here? Like, why, <laughs> why are you and like, why are you it, it, like, it doesn't last. You're not improving the smell of your house longer than until you blow that candle out. And right. seeing a candle burning mid afternoon also really weirds me out. <laughs> and I think it's gross. You know, like candles are like a nighttime thing, not a not a daytime thing. So, yeah, scented candles. Do you have anything that comes to mind? Oh, uh, goodness. Uh, also, I giant collections of VHS tapes. <laughs> <laughs> Especially people who feel like they need to display them. Yeah. Some of us have neuroses and we have different ways we like to work through them. Jake. Yeah. <laughs> But at least you don't put them next to fish tanks. <laughs> that that is true. I there are so many tattoos that I see. Oh, where I just think it's not that tattoos aren't can't be classy. I think they can be very classy. I think they can be great. I think some people have a really good sense of getting tattoos, right? Of 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 what they should get and how they should get it. But I see so many tattoos where I'm like, oof, yeah, all right. Well, hey, I mean. 
you do you, right? Like I'm no prize sitting over here. I get it. So I can only judge so far, but sometimes I see, especially if it's, you know, something like some fucking namaste or a, 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 a character in a language that person can't speak, you know, um, definitely if it's like the tribal tattoo, like white bros with tribal tattoos, I was kind of thinking like, yeah, all right, yeah. you know, enjoy, enjoy that. Uh, in that time i wanted to say family photos where the whole family is like in the same uniform okay but i think you can make that happen to comedic effect as well or i could see you all dressing in sort of a uh, a theme but it's not like you're all wearing the exact same thing but like family photos like you walk into someone's house and it's it's not just that they're all wearing the exact same thing, but that it's like a gigantic photo that like takes up a large portion of the living room. Like, do you guys really need to see a big photo of yourselves right. in this room? Yeah, see, right. Okay, now. so that's what I would get at with that is like we get it. Like, what, what what's the best case scenario here? Someone walks into this house and they're like, "Who lives here? Whoever lives here needs to, you know, we need to find them." Good news, everyone! They've got a giant picture of themselves up on the wall, <laughs> and they're all posed around this old pickup truck. And one of them's got a baseball glove. <laughs> we uh, we've got like three Christmas cards from when I'm younger that we clearly went to like a studio to have taken. And yeah. then my mom was like, nope, done. Not going to do that again. And so the rest of our Christmas cards are things where she like would schlep my sister and I out to a field and she's like, get on top of this hay bale. Oh um, my God. My, in my dad's second marriage, we went to this church and we, I guess the, the, the whole church was like offering uh, like a photographer to do family photos for one, like for like the church bulletin or something, right? Like yeah. the church directory or whatever. And my stepmom was like, all right, we're all going to go and we're going to take this photo and we're all going to dress in these denim clothes that I picked out. And so there's a photo somewhere, I believe probably still exists of my father, my uh, stepmother at the time, her son, me and my sister, all in denim, like matching denim outfits. And I remember even then being a kid with no taste, being like, this is disgusting. <laughs> I can't believe we're doing this. I am, again, not classy, right? <laughs> not classy. But, then you but I also, growing up, I always had trouble posing seriously for photos, not because I couldn't be serious, but because I didn't like the way I looked in pictures. I just didn't like how I looked. Sure. And so I thought, I'll do a funny face, right? And then it's okay that it doesn't look good because I'm doing a funny face. So like that was part of it too, was that I was being forced to like stand there and smile. And I, it, to me, that was, that was just torture. We have one family photo for, or we have, we have one Christmas photo that I am just, I look at it and I'm like, if I could go back and change one thing from my past, if I, if, <laughs> if I had one chance to change one outfit one day, it would be to change this one because I constantly see this picture and it haunts me. What it is is, it's like a week before Christmas and my mom's like, we have got to get this Christmas card taken so I can get them printed and put them out there. And so she had this idea that it would be funny if my sister and I were on a skating rink, but we were holding rollerblades like we brought the wrong kind of skates to the rink. And I remember my sister and I put up a big stink about we were not going to go to Claire Barton, which is our elementary school, because we'd be mortified if our friends saw us doing this. So we went to a different elementary school and we brought our dogs. And then my mom was like, also put on these like flap hats, you know, the ear flap hats that we're so famous for. And you can see if you look at this picture that I am not wearing a T-shirt underneath my winter coat like that's how big of a pain in the ass i was i was like i'm not gonna put on clothes for this and so i'm only wearing like pajama bottoms and no shirt and i'm doing this and i'm not even really smiling i'm just kind of like eh, because i was so embarrassed at what was going on i wish i could go back and be like dude put on a t-shirt to have a little self-respect <laughs> You're better. You're better than this, JJ. And like this, this will be one of those reminders going forward. So that's uh, that's what I would do. That was not classy when I did that. But you know, it is classy. Me being what? able to admit that I was not in a great place. That's classy. Sure. 
No, that's true. Knowing knowing that agree. like you know to what? say like listen, I haven't always I haven't always been the best person to be around. I've made <laughs> mistakes. That's classy. <laughs> Owning up is classy. I remember in the first grade or maybe no, it might have been kindergarten. No, I think it was first grade. So I had been given a present for I think Christmas by my aunt where you'd uh draw a picture and color it in and then you'd be able to like iron it onto a t-shirt oh, right cool. so you make your own t-shirt and so i i think i drew or i colored in some scene of like these dinosaurs like a bunch of different colors and made it right so i had this dinosaur shirt that i loved absolutely loved it and it was picture day and i got up and dr- got dressed and so i put on my dinosaur shirt because like i want to be in my dinosaur shirt for picture day and my mom saw it and said, no, no. I'm like, but I want to. She goes, no, 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 no. You need to look nice for your photo. So she put a sweater on me, right? She just grabbed a sweater, put it on me. She said, have that on when you take your photo. And so, like, I remember, like, standing in line to get my photo taken, really upset that I have to wear this crummy sweater. And right before I got up into the chair, I went, you know what? And I took the sweater off and i got up and they took my photo and then i got back down i put the sweater back on and then i went home and then i was like yeah yeah it's gonna be i want it to be like that and then i forgot about it i totally forgot about that i had basically like um you would hide exactly your own the school photo yeah basically and i remember i remember like when they when we got the prince because they get them to you at school and then you take them home with you. And I remember seeing it going like, oh, yeah, I forgot I did that. <laughs> and now I have to go home and get in trouble. <laughs> and how did your mom react? You know what? I actually I remember her being like upset, but not not enough for me to like really get in trouble. There's, I remember I was so mortified of getting in trouble as a kid that the few times that I did get in trouble, I remember those distinctly. And I didn't I don't remember that for this one. I just remember her being like, basically, like, God damn it. <laughs> I told him to put the sweater on. But uh, no, I took it off. I love that. That's awesome. OK, well, Tucker, we got to put this one to bed. You got to go glue some carpet squares down in your bedroom and yeah. uh I will also say this to the people going on. Um, if I said something that you do or that you think is classy is not classy, I don't need your hate mail because hate mail is also not classy. Um, you know, it's classy just being like, I'm going to do what I got to do and I'm going to be my own self. That's going to wrap it up for today's show. If you enjoyed this episode and would like to help us continue to produce new episodes each week, visit JJMeetsWorld.com, where you can donate to our Patreon, pick up some swag at the merch shop, or follow our link to Apple Podcasts and leave us a five-star review. You can also follow us on social media. We're on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, all the sites the cool kids are using these days. JJ Meets World is produced every week by Tucker Lucas. You can find out more about Tucker's work by visiting moonbasemaria.com. If you want to get in touch with your host with the most, check out linebenders.com where you can find direct contact info for JJ or booking information. Here's another thing that is not classy. It's not classy to judge somebody for how many toys they have on their desk. You don't know. They could be wanting to open a daycare. <laughs>